WDWMT the RPG, an original role-playing game set in and around the world of Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Our cast of players will take on their own characters, venturing around to meet some familiar faces, solve puzzles, discover mysteries, and explore. My name is Tyler Mann, and I will be your Parks Manager, taking on some characters myself and helping our cast understand what they are seeing and what they are doing. Occasionally, we'll use some dice to determine what actions they can take and how well those actions proceed. Each one to two hour adventure will be an ongoing series of stories tying into something much bigger. On tonight's episode, our cast of characters will be played by Megan Bresnan, Alicia Kaiser, Rob Whiteside, and Matthew Silverman. Tonight's adventure, The Mystery of Big Thunder Mountain. This is WDWNT, the RPG, Episode 2, and the adventure is about to begin. How is everyone doing tonight? Doing good! Hello, everybody! That is great to hear. We have a lot of folks who are checking us out tonight, so in case you don't know what an RPG is, it's a role-playing game. We're going to be treating it sort of like Dungeons & Dragons. They're going to be talking to characters, they'll be going on quests, there will be mysteries for them to explore, and all the while uh, I, the parks manager, will be describing what they're seeing and what they're doing. Everyone has a character, so let's go around and introduce yourself, uh, a little bit of your backstory, and maybe one interesting fun fact about your character. <laughs> Let's start with Megan. Megan, what's up? Hi. Um, my character's name is Cassie. She is a Disney College program intern, and she has the ability to make people happy just by smiling. Adorable. <laughs> All right. Uh, and what's like a interesting fun fact about them? Um, she works at Disney. I guess it's kind of cool. <laughs> We'll learn more about everybody as we play the game. Anyways, Alicia, introduce yourself and your character. Uh, I'm Alicia, and I am playing the character Faye. She's a bit of like an ice apprentice, and she studied under the Queen Elsa. And what's like a cool, fun fact about Faye? She doesn't have a snowman, but one day she will have her own huggable friend. Aww. <laughs> All right, Rob. Yeah. So my character's name is Hugo uh, Ulysses Goodfellow, uh, uh, and he is from Venus, Texas, uh, and he is a, a world-renowned merchant and traveler, and uh, he's traveled to Florida in search of uh, secrets and of his family and uh, just secrets in general. All right. Any fun fact about them that we should know? <sighs> he's super awesome. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 uh, initials Hugo, uh, Ulysses Goodfellow spells hug. Oh, <laughs> are you my huggable friend, Rob? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Matthew. Uh, I play Tim Rec the Gorf. Uh, he, his mission is to protect and preserve Disney attractions. Kind of a loner looking for a, a home of his own. Any fun fact about them? Uh, he has a wrench that can fix things. Yeah, we ran into some fun times on our last episode. That we did. Speaking of which, let's get the adventure started. Is everybody ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. Our story tonight starts with a slam on the door to the Sea Lounge, the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, and the magical lock engaging. A note on the front of the door from Merlin reads as follows. Thank you for your application into the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. However, we have chosen not to accept your admittance. On a more personal note, I was appalled to hear what you did on your quest. You illegally repaired a time rover, took an unscheduled trip back in time, you accessed cast member only areas to vandalize and then de-vandalize the Yeti, and I'm 90% certain that one of you actually stole my pants in the first place. I didn't want to do this, but you left me no choice. All of you are banned from sea. Best wishes in your future endeavors, Merlin. Well, thanks. Bite, um, you know, we did him a favor. Well, kind of. We did break the Yeti. Yeah. Yeah, Four. but we fixed him too. <laughs> to be clear, uh -huh. you you broke him, and then you put the piece that you broke back on. <laughs> so... It's no broken than it was when I found it. That's fair. Suddenly, yeah. 
the door to the left of the C door opens, because remember in Pecos Bills, there's two doors up there. So the other door opens, and you're greeted with a familiar face. It's Skipper David Mansfield from your original adventures, and Reginald, his pet lizard nesting on his, his shoulder. He says to you, oh, it's so good to see all of you again. How's it going? Uh, not great, man. <laughs> it just got fired. Yeah. yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about your relationship with C. Uh, S- sounds like since Disney actually created C, anything you do outside of their guidelines is a big no-no. But I can actually help you out because I'm part of a completely different group. Uh, we call ourselves the Freelance Adventure Co., and you can go against the rules. We can go out of bounds. We go into the beyond. So I'd like to invite you in instead. Uh, Skipper David Mansfield welcomes you onto the left door. Uh, a, where a much more rudimentary lounge was created. There are beanbag chairs that look like they're sewn from old cast costumes. There is a <laughs> fixins bar that looked like David just like put it in his shirt and dumped it out uh, instead. Uh, he says to you, before you get comfortable, there's a few things to note. Now that you're no longer a part of C, you cannot view the parks from the realms of the past and the present. Only oh. the present. What is here and now in the parks. I know that's a bit disappointing, but <clears throat> I promise you I'm going to send you off on many fun adventures. Are you saying we were overpowered before and now you're like putting us back into check? Is that... Is that what the vibe I'm getting here? Because we were pretty ab- awesome. I mean... C had abilities to let you go wherever, whenever, and it led to some dimensional rifts. So, uh, uh, well, that- maybe C should have left us more specific directions. <laughs> anyway, secondly, <laughs> you do not have the power of magic bands. You all have your own individual inventory. So um, if someone needs something, you have to pass it to somebody else. All right. Oh, so that so being said, much more lame. <laughs> it's Ugh. it's more Ugh. challenging. That being said, you still you do have a lock picking kit. So who would like to start off by hanging on to that? I mean, I'll hold on to it for the time being. Sounds good, Matthew. Make sure okay. to make a note in your inventory. You have a lock picking kit. There, I also have this wooden crate. One of you p- decided to pick up and take with you last time. Uh, do you still want this? Do you want to hang on to it? It seems it's- like it might need the storage. Yeah. All right. Who wants to hang on to this then? Decide amongst you. Got it. Okay, <laughs> Rod. Uh, or sorry, uh, Hugo. Make sure that you have a <laughs> note that you have a. <laughs> Inventory item of a wooden crate. And oh, thirdly, okay. C it. granted you any items from any store for free. That is no longer the case. You'll have to make money to buy items or have an in with somebody. But to start you off, I will give you some unpatented WDWNT bucks to start off with. So David hands you each 10 WDWNT bucks. So each of you have 10 for a collective 40. Okay. Uh, do they have Tom's face on it? Yes, they have. Oh, I don't have it up there, but they have Tom's Tom's face with the. Uh, you have a you have a dollar back there, don't you? What was that? Yeah, I have on one. your shadow box on the wall, you got the dollar. Yeah, but it, it doesn't have the Tom Coral. The dollar, face oh, you know. Wait, so do we still know that one cast member that like kept appearing all the time? You yeah, you ben? still know Ben. Yeah, Ben still exists. Don't worry. Okay, Am I is Ben like, still with us? Who? Gladys. Gladys is, but I don't think you'll be seeing her on this episode. Maybe the next one. Uh, Okay. That being said, I'm ready to now send you off on your first adventure uh, with the Freelance Adventure Company to the great and frightening Big Thunder Mountain. You see, um, this this washed up message in a bottle appeared at the door here at Pecos Bills. I know we're up a flight of staircases, so I don't know how that happened. Um, but, uh, the letter, I, it, I have no idea who it's from. I don't know where it came from. It just says on the letter, big thunder, help find deed. Now I should probably tell you at sundown tonight, if, uh, the deed to big thunder mountain, it's been missing this whole time. The actual mine itself, somebody owns it, but we, but it, it went missing in the tumbleweed flood. Do you all know about the tumbleweed flood? 
No, tell us about the tumbleweed flood. Okay, so back in the day, there was a town called Tumbleweed. It popped up, uh, it sort of grew right next to Big Thunder Mountain. But, you know, because Big Thunder Mountain is sort of like, you know, an ancient burial ground kind of thing. The the, The thunder itself sort of stormed down and a flash flood wiped away tumbleweed if you've ever been on big thunder you'll notice there's like a sunken town you sort of hop over some water there that's the town of tumbleweed and it it has been abandoned ever since so has the mine that's underneath the actual ride so the deed has been missing this whole time um we can't find any resources but we do know there's this one guy named nathaniel divine uh he claims to be one of the founders None of us are able to validate this in any way, but if at sundown tonight we can't find this deed, then he will be named the sole proprietor of Big Thunder Mine. And um, if you want to know more about him, uh, you can ask me a little bit later or ask me now, but basically he, he seems sketchy. I don't think I believe the fact that he was ever a founder of this mine. So if we're getting some kind of message of help, we need to find this deed and it's inside Big Thunder, then I think that's why I need to send you guys today. Okay. Like, is there anything else we need before we get going? I mean, you're probably going to need some supplies. I mean, everyone's pockets are empty except for, you know, that crate, and you can't really, like, eat that or anything. But uh, there is some stores that are open. I mean, there's the... You can go if you want, and I highly suggest you go talk to a few of the people who sort of operate out of Frontier Land. We got... There's Ben... Uh, you already know Ben. He's from. He's at the Frontier Trading Post. You can go talk to him. You can talk to me here in Pecos Bills if you have any other questions. But uh, I think Nathaniel Divine's daughter, Luella Divine, owns the the Prairie Outpost and Supply. You can go talk to her there if you want. Mm. So where do we head first, folks? Ben. Yes. Ben. All I hear in my head is Luella Devine. <laughs> well, for Dad's sketch, she might be too, so it makes sense for her to have a theme song. Well, then I guess if, if Ben's still on speaking terms with us, we should probably head to Frontier Trading Post. Does he know that we got fired? Like, should we not tell him? But he still thinks, like, we're cool. I'm not really ready to talk about it yet. It still stings. <laughs> it still hurts. Yeah, it does. Yeah. All right, so is everyone in, in agreement? They're going to the Frontier Trading Post to talk to Ben? Yeah. All right, so you make your way out of Pecos Bills around the corner to the Frontier Trading Post. Inside, Ben has a bunch of items for sale. Uh, there's some pins, there's a uh, lantern rope, sort of kind of adventuring materials. But uh, Ben actually gives you a friendly smile and says, Oh, hey, guys, how, how's everyone doing? Hi, Ben. I remember oh, everyone. Did you mention pins? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got, I got tons of items for sale. Uh, you want me to are, tell you everything that I have? Are they pass holder pins? Because they're, they're Frontierland Mystery Pack trading <laughs> pins. Those are those are 10 WDWT bucks if you want them. But I also got a, I also got this lantern here. Uh, I got a rope. I got a commemorative map of the inside of uh, Big Thunder Mountain. I also have this master key. But that's like 2,000 WDWT bucks, I don't think. Yeah, you know, you guys have enough money right now for that. Dave, David told me what happened. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that, but you know, he wasn't guys, supposed to tell you. He, he, we're best friends. He tells me everything. It's embarrassing. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Screw All right. Like, cast member discounts on any of this? Oh yeah, uh, I I can give you a, I can give you a fifty percent discount. Oh, that's not any. Anyone else a cast <laughs> member? We should have asked how much the stuff was before he said he was going to give us the discount. I, uh, well, if he's well, like, I mean, what, what do you want? Ask me. Tell me what you want, and I can uh, give you a sweet we need, discount. We need that map, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the map. The map is ten uh, WDWT bucks, but for uh, but for Cassie over here, cast member, I'll, I'll give it for five because you know discounts. Yeah. I think oh, we should get that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you now have the inside map of Big Thunder, which uh, cool. will you can look at once you go into the mine later. Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, you now have five less WDWT bucks. Man, what, what else can I help you guys with? What are you up to today? Want to hang out? <laughs> ben, I think we have to go on an adventure. Do you want to come with us? Do you know anything about uh, what's going on at Big Thunder Mountain? Oh, 
I mean, yeah, I mean the you know the Nathaniel guy. What a what a mean guy that guy is. He he's always telling lies about me and saying that you know my uncle wasn't a founder. Do you know my uncle? Do uh, no. Know? Oh, oh, his, his name is uh, his name is Park Center. Uh, he was actually uh, one of the. He was actually one of the co-founders of the mine, uh, but sadly he, he he died back in that tumbleweed flood that happened years and years ago. So wait, your uncle is Park Center? Yeah, Park Center. P-R-K. So the, those initials, Uncle Park Center, UPC. Does that mean something? <laughs> no, it's U- UPS. It's Center with an S. Why would <laughs> Center be spelled with a C? It's a S E N T E R. Park Center. <laughs> Because Park Center always delivers. Exactly. Um, <laughs> UPS. Okay. Uh, do we think we need anything else, guys? The, I know I, I heard mention of a rope and a lantern. Yeah, we got yeah, a lantern and a rope. I got some pins and that and the big key. Well, the big key is unfortunately a little out of our price range, though. If we do wind up getting a thousand bucks. Uh, two thousand. Oh yeah, but uh, unless she buys. Yeah, but we, it's as long as we yeah. have. Uh, I know you're all a group, class. but I need that person to specifically yes. buy it so he can use their discount. You're correct. <laughs> I can't get fired again. Like, I mean, I just got fired from Seattle. I don't want to lose this job. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll just make sure no one else here is okay. So, uh, since this is a trading post, will you trade for, like, say, I don't know, a big useless box? <laughs> Ooh, well, if it's useless, I'll give Wait, you... Wait, no. I have a dino tooth still. That is true. You uh, in Frontierland. Uh, actually, I'm useless. gonna. Sorry, I'm gonna have to say no. Those four items no. were in the sea lounge when it locked. Unfortunately, gotcha. Oh, so you know, we help them out. They 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 give us the boot and they keep our stuff. Yep, that's fine. So, I didn't want to work for them anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They can hire me all they want. Shit. Whatever. They suck. So, do you want to buy anything else? Do you want to spend more questions? How, how much uh, is the rope and how much is the lantern? Well, the, the lantern is 25 um, and the, the rope is 10 But again, half off for for Cassie. <laughs> uh, so the, mem- the cast member discount is not transferable. Gotcha. Um, you, can trans- you can give her the money. No. Yeah. We're going to follow the rules. Because okay. last time we got fired when we broke the rules. No, you can totally if, give if we the money to somebody else and let them buy it for you. <laughs> right? So do we need any of this other stuff, or can we... I feel like more? we need at least a lantern. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean a lantern was, was 25, so... If we're going at night. If, the, if we use... If, we, if we're Just pulling our resources, know. that would be 1250. Mm-hmm. It is, it is sundown right now, or sorry, it's it's yeah. dusk right now. So sundown is getting close. We need that lantern. Yeah. yeah. So we just need to pool our money together. I guess we do. Remember, we also should talk with uh, Luella. Was it? Yeah. Luella. Luella. Uh, ben says Luella Divine. Oh God, I hate her so much. Her and her <laughs> dumb father. He, he he's always he, he's always saying that. Oh yeah, my uncle wasn't really the founder and everything. You know what? It, it, if anyone should be the owner of Big Thunder, it should be me, because I'm I'm his living relative. I'm his nephew. You know what, Ben? If we figure this out, we will try and help you. Okay, that would be great. If you, if, you know, just keep me in the back of your mind. But yeah, they, she, Luella, I mean, if you want to buy something from her, she sells a bunch of garbage cupcakes. So you can, if, you, if you're really hungry or you need something from them. Has anybody reviewed those cupcakes yet? <laughs> oh, probably. Cool. Probably, okay. Probably disgusting. Probably threw them out in the trash. Oh. Hey, still gotta be better than blue milk. <laughs> um. So, what do you do now? Do you head over there? Do you ask Ben anything else? Um, I'm, I'm like trying to think. We ha- did we buy the lantern or did we not? I think we would just kind of need discuss- to buy the lanterns at all. <clears throat> what? I said, do you need to buy the lantern still? I feel like we should. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we're talking dust, okay. yeah. up there, lighting lighting isn't always the most reliable thing. All Plus, right. if we're going to go uh, spelunking. Yeah, we're going to have to go to a mine. All right, so uh, it'll be the, if, if Cassie wants to buy it for you, it'll be uh, 12 dollars then. So who wants to give up their 10 and 
Who wants to give up 250? I'll give up 10. Okay. <laughs> Alright, um, so just make notes of what you're trading or who you're trading it to and so on. Alright, I'll give up the 250. Alright. Because I still have my box, so... Or we can divvy it up any other way, I mean... Yeah, you hold on to your money, and uh, and that way we won't have to, like, you know, share quarters or anything like that. I like how none of you are happy with just pooling all the money together. You're also, you're also, you're also <laughs> holding money. on to your own $10, like, this is mine! <laughs> I was led to believe when you said we all had our own inventory that we had to keep... You did, but you can stuff. trade it between each other. Like, if you're like, oh, I'll throw you some money and you can throw me some money later. Right? Well, why don't we give all our money to Cassie since she's got the discount? We'll just give it all to her and everything's going to be 50% off. Cassie when... will kind of be our bank. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Um, do you buy the lantern for twelve fifty then? Yes, please. All right, so you now have a map and you have a lantern. Anything else you want to do here with Ben? rope? Do we want it? Do we need it? What do we do? I mean, we're going into a, a mine. Mine. There are the mis- There's also the mystery pins. I don't know what the mystery pins are or what they might Oh, yeah. Oh, those are just standard mystery pins, you know, but if you... It ain't my Eddie, you never know. You see, Ben says it with a sense of foreboding. <laughs> no, that was just literally a general thing. Like, <laughs> I collect pins, so I'm on the pin train, but if you guys don't want them, I understand. Well, how much money do we have? We spent the ten on uh, the yeah. five on the map. Was it ten or five? It was five. Welcome so to the five map. on the map, twelve fifty then... on the lantern. So that's seventeen fifty, and we have mm-hmm. forty. So we've got... Uh, Twenty-two fifty left. Yeah. How much is the rope? Oh, the rope ten is bucks. a ten WWT box, but if Cassie's buying it, it's five. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't hurt to have it. Wait, how much are the pins? Ten. Ten and half off, so five. How many do you get? Uh, it's a mystery pack. You would get four of them. Oh. And how many are in the set? <laughs> uh, there are ten in the set. Just making sure I know all of my options here. <laughs> I don't think we have that much money. <laughs> then no. So we're going to take a rope, and we're going to take a lantern, and we're going to take a map, and we'll be done. Okay. All right, then. If you buy the rope, it's five WWNT dollars, so keep track of that. So you now okay. have a lantern, a rope. Uh, just decide amongst yourselves who's going to be carrying oh. that. I mean, it can all go is... as a crate. <laughs> Rob, Hugo, how, how heavy would all this be? Oh, it doesn't even matter. Bring it. Bring just it. all in the crate. Look, the crate's coming in. Well, right carry it in shifts. And the map yeah. is something you guys can collectively all pass back and forth to each other. All right, so uh, what do you do now? You can go back and talk to David at Paco Spills if you have any other questions, or if you want to ask him about what's going on with Nathaniel or Ben. Uh, and you can also still go to talk to Luella Divine at the Prairie Post Supply. Uh, I mean, we're trying to figure out what's what, what the deal is with Nathaniel. But I think maybe we should talk to the well first and then maybe go back to, uh, what's his name, the Skipper? Or... David. Skipper David. Because, I mean, Ben kind of told us his deal. All right. So what do you do now, then? Where are you going? First the well. All right. So you, Where's she at? You, go, you all head to the Prairie Outpost in Supply and Luella Divine is there. Wait uh, a minute. Have we waited this long to talk to Luella and Tyler's got, like, a great Luella, like, all locked and loaded? Why didn't we go there first? Because we wanted to see Ben. We wanted some some form of comfort after we got booted from C. Let's bring it. Luella, what's up? <laughs> oh, howdy, y'all. Oh. oh I'm Luella. Luella, she oh. says. She, she's, wearing a, she's wearing a red corset dress. She looks like... Um, she looks like the redhead from Pirates, basically, is what her outfit is uh, and her general just demeanor. Uh, she has a very strong <laughs> southern accent. She's like, how's everyone doing today? Can I get you some fine delectables? Um, 
What, uh, can you tell us a little more about these delectables? Oh, absolutely, you handsome man. We got the fine cupcakes, and those are five WDWNT bucks. And then we have a big thunder cupcake, and that one is six WDWNT bucks. I also got this canteen. I don't know if you want it. It's uh, 15 WDWNT bucks. But we also have a lovely beverage. It's called Big Thunder Mountain Dew, and that's one WDWNT buck. I apologize to everyone for this accent. That was a proud moment, though, when you figured out Mountain Dew, wasn't it? That was, oh, yeah. that was a big deal. I bet you there were high fives all over for that one. Oh, it was um, totally me and not Thomas from Ride Rehab who came up with sure. that idea. I totally sure. did it all by myself. Uh, um, no, it, it just, yeah. Well, anyway, I mean, uh, so the canteen, that sounds like a good deal. Plus, it would be like seven, would you say it was $15? Oh, yeah, I said 15. What's all the seven nonsense? Oh, oh, do we not say discount here? Seven. Why, why do you, wh what kind of discount? What, what, what do you have? Well, I'm a cast member. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, yes, of course there's half off for cast members. Yeah. Do you take DVC? D23? No, no we cast don't. Member. We don't take any other discounts. Only cast members. Okay. Oh. But... Disney Visa? <laughs> I can give you points on your Disney more. Visa. But, uh, but yeah, what, 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 what are y'all doing here today, anyways? Are you here for the big announcement of my pop, uh, papa's pops? Or they, I don't know what she'd say. Oh. Of, of, of my dad being the, the, the owner of Big Thunder Mountain now? Well, actually, we were trying to find out a little more about your father. Uh, oh, and, and why would that be? Oh, we're, we were good. we were thinking about heading up that way to, for the big announcement. Oh well, well, my father is actually here. If you want to say hi to him, he comes out. He's a big, tall man, and he's very broad-chested. He's got a uh, a nice suit on and a bolo tie. And he goes, "Oh, hi everyone! Oh, how's it going here today, all? I hear talk. You want to learn a little bit more about me?" <laughs> well, yeah, we were. Uh... We we were we heard about the big announcement. We wanted oh, yeah. to know what, a little more about what was going on. Oh, well, you see, uh, I was uh, one of the co I was one of the only founders. Sorry, I was one of the only founders of Big Thunder way way back in the day. You know, before the whole tumbleweed flood and the and the mine collapsed. Did you hear about that? Was, uh, the mine is be very shaky and unstable and so. Uh, that's why I'm, that's why I'm so happy that I'm finally gonna be named the the proprietor of it because you know there's a lot of work you can do on those them their mines. <laughs> So what are you planning to do with the mines once oh, you, uh... What do I plan on doing? I'm probably going to expand this here store. This is my daughter's store. I bought it from her, from uh, the last owner, and she, you know, she makes the, just the most divine cupcakes, and I just want her to hire the world. Isn't that right, sweet? Oh, yeah, that's right, Papa. Yeah, so, uh, probably expanding more, you know, make a little bit more money, if you know what I'm talking about. Expand? Uh, how, how so? Are you going to, like... Uh, build a second location or yep. expand the current store. We build a second location, riding Big Thunder. You know, we we uh, between you and me, we we charge an extra dollar on these cupcakes. They're the exact same thing, but they just we just call them the Big Thunder cupcakes. So, uh, we're, you know, if we actually get a store inside of Big Thunder, we'll be rolling <laughs> in the money pretty much. Okay, so yeah. obviously but looking for into that franchising. On Keep that under your hats, though. Don't tell anyone. I, I, I like you guys. You, you all seem to be very interested in us. I have a question. You said yeah. you'd be named the uh, uh, the the owner of Big Thunder. Who's yes. naming you that? Oh, well, uh, that would be uh, the 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 city council member. Uh, you you probably know him. Uh, his name is Oh my God! What was his name again? <laughs> His name was We'll Help Ya. You know, you probably see him there down on Main Street. He's a, oh, he's well, a handsome you. young man, and he's got the big sash on, little top hat kind of thing. He's mm -hmm. going gonna to be naming me, because you see the deed, the deed, uh, no one knows where it is. I mean, it was probably lost in the flood or wherever else when the mine collapsed and so on. So, you know, uh, there's no one left alive except me from, the, you know, those olden days, and I'm just happy to say that, you know, I, I think I should finally deserve, you know, we write up a new deed. We put my name on it, big letters, no one else can, you know, take its place. 
Nothing sketchy about that. Absolutely yeah. nothing sketchy about that. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. Well, what time? Uh, what time's the big announcement? Oh, it's going to be at about uh, sundown or so. You know, in the next uh, probably hour and a half or so. <laughs> you don't have a watch. I, I, I'm wearing a watch. It's a big watch. I got it from <laughs> Movement Watches. We're not sponsored by them. Uh, it's just the first brand name that could come to my head. What's the brand name of the watches in Disney again? Citizen. Citizen. Citizen watch. <laughs> Cool. Well, you certainly are a good citizen. I had to look at my watch to tell you when sundown was, by the way. Good thing I memorized it and counting down the minutes. It's one of the big uh, Fred Flintstone like sundials. Yeah, it's a big thing. <laughs> oh, watch okay. and it's completely dark, but I'm somehow reading it. Uh, anyways, uh, anything else we can help you with? You want to buy anything here for my lovely daughter? Yeah, you want to buy something for me, folks? <laughs> Do we want I the canteen? The cupcakes. The canteen, cupcakes, uh, beverages. The canteen is the only thing that sounds like it might be something we need. Yeah. It does sound like it might be. So how much was the canteen again? The the canteen. I didn't know which voice to pick. The canteen there is going to go for about 15 bucks. But I guess that would be about, oh my god, I'm so bad at math. Oh, you're bad at math? It's two dollars. (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh yeah, <laughs> two dollars. That sound right, Pa? Well, it sounds right to me. I'm not good at the math either. Yep. Yeah, so be a dollar. Fifteen sounds like two, so let's go with that. <laughs> let's do oh, it. Okay. Yeah, I trust sold. you, folks. Yeah, you I'll buy like you're welcome. Folks. That is a good deal. <laughs> All right, so you buy the canteen for two WDW and D bucks. Then it's an empty canteen, by the way. There's nothing in it currently. That's fine. Is Megan, Megan, are you doing all this math? Yeah, I, mean, I am. Cassie, are you doing yeah. all this math? Oh. Uh, Megan's cool. bad at math, but Cassie's somewhat decent at it. Well, she is. You know, she has yeah. CP. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> hey, one last thing. Like, where, where, uh, have you seen Will recently? Like, do you know where he is? Will help you? I believe he's down on Main Street right now. Uh, you, you'll be able to talk to him during the actual event later on. Once sundown actually hits, he'll be around. So we can't talk to him before then? No, he's 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 down on Main Street, and uh, I think uh, you know. And by the time you get down there, he'd already be walking back and everything. So yeah. Hmm. Cool. I get where you're coming. The likely story, okay. It's a very likely story. It's all yeah. true. No, no, we're good. We cool. Well, cool. thank you so much for all your help today. You're welcome. Where are you folks headed to next? I, I think maybe we should go talk to Skipper David. Uh, when you when you say that, um, Nathaniel perks up and he goes, mm. "Oh, that uh, that f- person there in the uh, in that uh, you know, big th- sorry, Pecos Bills." Yeah, yeah that's the that. guy. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Well, have fun. Just you know, don't talk too long because you know the that thing is going to be happening soon. I want you all to be there. He says. I get serious vibes oh. from this guy that we don't want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, jinkies. Yeah. Jinkies. Cool. All right, well, have fun there, then. Uh, do you head over to Pecos Spills again to talk to David? Yep. Yeah. All right, then. That's all we want out of life right now. Don't eat anything. You're going to suck. All right, so you go into Pecos Spills up, the, up into the... Uh, up into the... the lounge for the adventurer company and david says hey uh, how's it going did did you did you find out anything from anybody before you know you head into the mine so apparently will help you is the person responsible for assigning the new deed yes yes he uh, is. there is a park center who may or may not be one of the founders of the mine yeah he he's one of the co-owner in fact i think i might have picture here uh david rustles through some of the inventory in the back area and he pulls out a picture it's a photograph of the first expedition um or the founding of the mine showing a bunch of folks including and he points and he's like there's two men right front center he's like see this uh this fellow here with the long hair who looks like hiccup from how to train your dragon uh that's park center and um and the fellow next to him he that that's glide serenini he um he was actually the the founder of Pecos Bills. Um, I actually rent the space from him here, but but you know he he mysteriously vanished when the tumbleweed 
flood happened. So his name is still the owner here. So there's some kind of bank account getting a ton of money that I'm renting this place out from. But yeah, as far as I know, those are the Glide Saronimi. Glide Saronimi. Glide, like gliding through the air. Yeah, that that it's going to be a real easy name to remember. Um, <laughs> well, just think of Clyde, but make it a G, so it's Glide. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, you can actually hang on to that photo if you want, but, you know, I think you might have noticed that Nathaniel's not even in this photograph. Claims to be one of the founders. Why isn't he in this picture, you know? It's it's sketchy. It's very sketchy. Seems. Well, hopefully that date will uh, shed some light. Hopefully. Um, do you have any other questions, anything else, before you head into the mine, then? Got any loose change to share? <laughs> Got any WWNT bucks you're not using? Uh, I have a framed $100 WWNT bill, but that you know that's the first amount of money that I made for my first expedition of the Jungle Cruise, so uh, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't I, give I, that, that to you. That wouldn't be right, and we certainly want to get give off, we wouldn't want to give off any sense of impropriety. Of course not. But no. at the same time, we are talking about saving Big Thunder. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. Well... Uh, Look, but, we know where it is. We can always come back for it. If, okay. If we're desperate. I mean, Besides, we have to tell us, see, so. I'm sure it. there's yeah. some hidden treasure inside of Big Thunder. And you know what? If you find it, you keep it. That's fine. We just want to make sure that we can help out whoever sent us this letter. Touch you know, that's, nothing that's the but the lamp. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. There. That being said, good point. Thank you for reminding me. If you're going into Big Thunder, be careful where you watch be careful where you watch. <laughs> Sorry, I... Careful <laughs> watch. where you watch. <laughs> I briefly watch passed out. You watching <laughs> watch, be careful, watch your step, and be careful with what you touch, because I heard everything there is booby-trapped. You never know what's going to go off, so just be careful, okay? There might be some hidden treasures. Just keep an eye out, but be careful. Remember to scan for magic, folks. Because you never know. Never know what's going to be in there. It is the wildest ride in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, you must have heard, you know, the that you know the mountain thunders all on its own, and mine trains go off, off crazy directions all by themselves. You know, I mean, we all think it's spirits. I really hope, hopefully, that's. I mean, it'd be wicked if that was true, but we don't want to disturb any spirits. You know what I mean? Oh. Where is Baby Powder Pete when you need him? <laughs> right? Um, I've been trying to get a hold of him for weeks. I think he's at Jelly Rolls. Probably. He's probably at Jelly Rolls. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we ready to go to Big Thunder Mountain? We got our canteen, our... Um, our we, got rope, we got a map. Mm -hmm. And a lock. Picking, a crate and a lock picking kit. Okay. Right, Team, we got this. So I, just I, a reminder, if by sundown the deed can't be found, the Divine Family is automatically going to be given proprietorship of Big Thunder Mine itself. Well, then we better get looking. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right. do we go into the mine or do we watch his like ceremony thing? The cere I think if you were to go into the mine, you can get back in time to probably... Oh make sure the ceremony doesn't happen. If okay. if the if the deed has someone else's name on it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could go in there and find out that everything is absolutely legit. And this kind, tall gentleman with the sundial watch is telling the truth. Oh, does he have, like, a sundial watch? That's weird. Did he read it? Did he pretend to read it in front of you by, like, making up a number, like, an hour and a half or something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's weird. That is weird. <laughs> All right. All right. So off to the mountain. So you head off to Big Thunder Mountain. Is everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. As you approach Big Thunder, you find that all is quiet. The queue line leading up to the attraction has been roped off in preparation for the big announcement back at Big uh, at Frontierland for the new owner of the mine at sunset. There is a footpath for you to enter the underground mine where the deed is supposedly lost. So what do you do? Do you go down the footpath? Or do we jump the rope barrier? 
Oh. I'm just disappointed because the thing is roped off, meaning that there's rope there, and we could have just taken that. <laughs> what what did you say about the stealing? I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> That's who I am now. Cassie's a cast member. Yeah. Can cast members oh. take rope and jump over it if I they mean, want to? Yeah. She has the power to remove the barrier. She I is do. all of his personnel. Cassie's starting to become the MVP of this group. <laughs> really Wait, did, did Cassie just bump into greeter position? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. <laughs> What do we want to do? We want can... to go mine exploring, or do we want to head up to the top? I don't know. I mean, obviously, the deed is in the mine, but I don't know if there's anything up top that might help us. Except a smelly cue? <laughs> it's probably best for you to continue through the footpath. All right, we'll do that okay, one. Okay, well, we don't want to break our game, so <laughs> let's... Uh... Well, I mean, if you want to take the rope, there's ro that rope is there. Just, just saying. Let's uh, well, uh, let's take it then. I'll do yeah. it. I'll do it. <laughs> I didn't see it, so go ahead. I mean, I've already been fired once for taking stuff. I'll do it again. <laughs> let's do it. I'm taking it. I'm gonna put it in my box. You got. You don't know. You don't know if I took it or not. I'm gonna put it in my box. It's done. It's done. Okay. Uh, you take the rope. Then you now have a second rope. Um, the ropes themselves are probably a length between twenty and thirty feet or so. Um, the a cast member walks by, but upon seeing Cassie, uh, waves high and continues on like nothing had happened. <laughs> that is proof. Okay, so what do we want to do, guys? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we gotta head to the mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you head down the footpath, uh, at the end of it, there is a hatch in the ground. The handle is rusted, and it looks like it hasn't been used in years. Well, I have um, a magic wrench that can fix that. I also have ice and water that can do things. Well, wouldn't water just make it more <laughs> rusty? Oh, I was thinking it might, like, you know, like, loosen it up, but, you know. I think you're thinking of uh, WD-40. <laughs> you can, like, can you summon WD-40? WD no, not yet. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. So, uh, you're in your uh, I guess yeah. That's a level four. <laughs> I guess I I'll roll. Get there yet. I guess I roll to repair the hatch. Oh, okay. Uh, what is your what what trait would you use for? Oh no, you it would be a spell, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have so, that under weapon spells with a one d four. Okay, well then uh, go ahead and just roll a d twenty. Oh, d twenty. Okay, and uh, what? Uh, I will roll one. <laughs> oh no. Man, this is not going <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't mean to laugh. I just remembered the whole thing with the Yeti. <laughs> Tim Rick, I blame the manufacturer. This is a... <laughs> oh my gosh. The whole thing just get, like, thicker? Like, is it, like, harder now? <laughs> you have the only, the only like, loaded 20-sided die that in the world? <laughs> I, I have no idea, and it certainly isn't loaded the way I'd like it to be. <laughs> no, the clearly rusty not. Hatch, which gets more rusted and broken, and then proceeds to just shatter water. off the the hatch itself, making <sighs> it unlocked. <laughs> so, were we supposed to go in the hatch? And then, yeah. if that's the case, like, where do we go now? Did, well, you go did, in the hatch. It did Timrak just break the entire game? No, I just but it broke open. I, I, oh, it I, broke I, open. I, Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Basically, my magic, my my repair skills turned it into an explosive. <laughs> <laughs> so we have blown open the, the hatch. I mean, good luck trying to, you know, erase our tracks later. <laughs> you know, what are they going to do? Throw us out of another society? I think David is a little bit more forgiving uh, in his adventure company. Uh, okay, so as you do you open the hatch then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so as you open the hatch, you are led into a cavernous room that appears to be 30 by 30 feet. And I'll show you a visual of the map uh, that they are all or have been looking at. Uh, and just to give everybody a little bit of a thing, I have a little surprise yeah, for you. It's uh, you, you are here. 
So if uh, if you're watching the stream, you should be able to see where everybody currently is. So it's a 30 by 30 foot room. If you're looking at your map, it's the first room at the very top of the map. Um, okay. So the light spills in from outside and a dozen bats fly out upon being disturbed. Uh, inside, the air is dusty, but you can make out a few rocky steps leading down. Oh. Okay there, Alicia? I'm, I'm seeing through the dust. Okay. <laughs> I'm role-playing. Oh, we... Were you afraid, afraid she was having, like, like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were choking or something. You were like... <laughs> There was no audio. Like, okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Do you investigate the room? Climb in the room? Use your lantern? Say, do we need to turn on the lantern? Like, yeah. Oh. There is light currently spilling in from the outside of the hatch from outside, but the rest of the room is dark. Then I think we need the lantern. Yeah. All right. Who's using the lantern then? Uh, then I, I can, can hold. Uh, to you. Uh, I don't care. I can hold on to it. Okay. Um, All right. Maybe. So as you uh, as you flick on the lantern, um, you see that across the room is a strong wooden door. Can we investigate the door? Yes, you can investigate the door. Make a d twenty roll for it. Who who who's investigating? Don't don't let Tim oh, uh, I'll, I'll roll do, it. Yeah, because that's that has not worked out well. That's been awful. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, oh. so you are able to see that this strong wooden door has an AC of fifteen. So basically, if you want to like knock it down, you have to roll higher than a fifteen. Um, and the door itself is locked with a pretty simple lock. You know what? Uh, I do have a lock picking kit. Mm-hmm. Okay. I kind of just wanna with my ice. She's yes. just hurting to do some ice really, stuff. really, really just want ice stuff. stuff. He's got the lockpick kit, though. Let's go with that this time and just, like, you know, hold the ice for later. You guys just ruined all my no. fun. Oh, no, no, no. You're going to be on deck for the big one. <laughs> um, upon, you, you did investigate. Upon investigating, you also see a series of ropes and pulleys around the door frame that lead up to a wooden contraption above the door. Inside that contraption is a crossbow with a <gasps> poisoned green tipped arrow pointing straight down underneath the door. Don't okay. open the door. Don't open the door. <laughs> I would like to also let you know, just as a as a parks manager, that opening the door itself would trigger a trap, not actually just unlocking it. What if you freeze the arrow? I could. Well, would that like, like not in place? What was the question? If you freeze yeah. it. Yes, you can you can freeze it. And when right. we open the door it won't move. Uh it depends on how good of a job you did freezing it. Ooh. Oh, that's a lot so, of just for the group. Does it seem conspicuous that he said that you can unlock the door without opening it? Like what what's the advantage of unlocking a door? And not opening it. Are there any other I'm just, pathways? Though? I'm just letting you know that when a, a trap won't actually be triggered until the door opens. Ah, okay. So you so can freely that... lockpick it, for example, without triggering the trap that you see above you. So we could lockpick, unlock the door, then freeze the arrow so the ice doesn't mm -hmm. melt, and then open it? And then run very quickly? Yeah. Or we just, you know, steal those ropes from the pulleys. As long as, you know, we're just stealing rope out here. <laughs> yeah, I do have some serious buyer's remorse about that first rope. <laughs> like, this place is just filthy with, with rope. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do then? I think that Tom Rick's plan was a good one. So we start with the lockpick. Do we got to roll for that, or because he has the lockpick kit, does he just do that? Because you have a lockpick kick, it, pick kit, it allows you to pick locks. Without it, how would you pick a lock? <laughs> so you need to but you don't roll, have to for, roll it. for anything. You just we? roll a d20 to whether or not you pick the lock or not. It's a simple lock, so it's like the difficulty of it. So give a d20 roll. Me, I'm the one holding you have the lockpick. Oh, can do it. Okay, here we go. May the odds be ever in your favor. 17. 
Uh, oh. The lock slides with butter. Slides with butter. Uh, the, <laughs> the lock slides open like There's butter. butter, too? What was <laughs> There's <laughs> ropes and butter all over the place. Um, so yeah, the, the lock opens easily, so the door uh, is still closed at the moment, but it's unlocked. Uh, I believe that's up to you. Uh, Faye? Faye, yeah. Um, okay. You got ice set up? I'm going to ice it up. Do it. What is your magic modifier? Uh, my magic is 14, and then I have a plus 2. Okay, go ahead and roll the d20 and add 2. 11. In total? I'm sorry. <laughs> like it was 9 plus 2? Yes. Okay. Um... So you use uh, your freezing magic on it, which uh, freezes the the left side of the the contraption itself. <laughs> so the right side uh, is still active. The right side of the crossbow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, I could try fixing it. That might do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just using the like you're you're hoping to roll a low number on fixing to do damage? <laughs> well, I'm just looking at a pattern right now. <laughs> you got seventeen before. Oh, yeah, sure. but that was to pick a lock. That wasn't to fix something. Sure. Yeah. So can't we just like do a, like a like a British thing and just stay on the left? <laughs> or we go with Plan B, which is steal the ropes, which would I would assume break the mechanism. But would it trigger it? Oh yeah, it might trigger that. Yeah. Can we just put like the box, like our crate underneath it and just let it penetrate the box? Ooh, that's right. We can just stay yeah. clear of it and put the arrow in the box. You know, just don't go willy nilly with my box. <laughs> I mean I like that. I clearly wanted that to be a part of this adventure, so you just That's like true, it throwing is. it around. Yeah. So I feel like there's something we're missing that we can't just like you frozen half of it. We can't just go in and. Okay. Is there left. anything anything else in the room? There is nothing okay. else in this room. Okay. What? There were if, bats, but they were flown out by now. <laughs> what if we use our extra rope and tie the arrow to the ceiling? I hey man, I'm just coming up with. Us. How does that work? We got a half frozen arrow up there. You also have it's like less than an hour off. to get to okay. the end of this mine and also so can, find the deed. So we could use the rope and like lasso it and like try to get it out of there. <laughs> like trying to catch it. Someone make a decision for the group. Oh my god. Probably, you know I, I think I think we we just try to go through the door and see if the thing trips. Oh man, someone's gonna die. <laughs> I will fall on the sword given how useful I've been. Uh, I'll go. Well, I mean, we certainly don't don't need him for his money anymore because he's already put that in the pot. So <laughs> yeah, all I got is my lock picking kit. Yeah, we can loot that off the body. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, let's Leroy Jenkins this thing. All right. Leroy! Okay. Um, the unlocked door, Matthew, or sorry, uh, Tim Rack, just runs right into it, knocks it open, and the the crossbow, because the left side of it is frozen, uh, the right side of it tries to trigger, but the arrow just ends up um, just getting jammed in the actual... Uh, crossbow itself. So the arrow. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Now that we now that we've opened the door and everybody's safe, let's loot the crossbow. Can we? Because it's still frozen. But like, are there other arrows? Oh. Or is it just the one poison one? There was it, there was one poisoned arrow in the crossbow. Oh well, if it's jammed, then it's jammed. Yeah. Yes, everyone being alive is a better. Uh, is a better alternative. I think we need to keep moving, because I don't want this guy to get the deed. Yeah. No, we need to get moving. All right, so you keep moving, and I'm just going to a little show uh, on our little map here that... Uh, <laughs> oh, got to pull up that map. <laughs> that uh, you are now in the hallway beside. Uh, so you have the lantern right now, so you can see that the walls have been hollowed out from mining 
or this rocky tunnel has been hollowed out long ago from mining. Uh, every step kicks up some dust. And at the end of the hallway around the corner is another door. Are there any booby traps? You gotta investigate. Oh, I, investigate. I investigate. Okay. Shoot. 14. 14. Uh, you see that this is a good wooden door that is currently unlocked. Uh, you do not see any traps. Hmm. Should we scan for magic? I know that was a thing we used to do. Mm-hmm. Man, remember when we scanned for okay. magic? <laughs> I mean, is magic really a part of this, though? It's just like an evil guy trying to keep a a mine from us. Like, is that really a thing that's going to be happening? That was back when we had Merlin and the whole deal. I don't don't know the level of uh, Skipper David's uh, magic ability here, so... There may or may not be some magic floating in the mine. I can't tell you. You have to investigate. I mean, if there's ghosts and stuff, then there could easily be magic. That's true. All right, so so uh, Tim Rec wants us to scan for magic. Yep. How do we do that? Uh, well, it would be one of your four traits. Which one would you be using? Wouldn't that be magic to scan for magic, or yes. would that be? <laughs> yes, yes, it would. That's the point I was trying to make. <laughs> okay. Okay, I have a twelve with a modifier of plus one. All right, then roll and give plus one. Eleven plus one, twelve. Okay, um, you do not see you do not see or sense any kind of magic in this room or this hallway, rather. Sorry, hallway. Do we try and open the door? Yes, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, oh. the door is more, unlocked, so more push action. the door open. Uh, you are now in the next room, which I'm going to demonstrate. Here. Oh, well, that was safe. Um, as you as you step in, you see a narrow shaft in the room above, uh, or sorry, uh, above above the room. There is a stack of rotting wooden crates standing against the south wall. I love crates. In crates. The far corner of the room is another door. So there are two doors in this room, or just the one? The door you came through, and the door at the other corner of it. Increase. Oh. I feel like since we were warned that like, this place would be booby trapped, I feel like there's something that's going to happen with these crates. Probably. Perhaps we should unstack them so that they can do less damage. But I'm also thinking like this is a mine, and there's like dynamite in the mine, so now I'm a little curious. Like I'm very curious about like touching these. I don't want to blow up. <laughs> Can we scan the crates? <laughs> you can what investigate is, what the crates. What do I see from, like, looking at them? Um, investigate? Just, just by looking at them, you can just see that they are rotting. They are covered in dust, as if nobody has touched them in years. So we're probably safe. Hopefully. Maybe. I mean, Unlikely. I'm just saying, they're stacked. They could fall. They could. But we if they're rotting... Them. By stacks, there is, um, they are about, you know, waist height kind of um, crates, and there are two of them stacked on top of each other. So about Wait, so we're just talking about two crates? No, there's, (laughs) there is some crates, but the stack of it is two. They are head height. So we're talking about the height of a person. Yes. So if this were a video game, my instinct would be that there's something up there that the crates would help us to, like, if we move them into position to get up into this this place above us, right? Or there's something in the crates. Because that's a thing in video games, too. Yeah, I, I'm, I usually use them to stand on, and if I can't get anywhere, then I break them. So That's true. We could do that first. Yeah. I mean, is that... Because describe again... Um, David, they are, master, they are, I don't know. Well, you just call me Tyler because I'm the parks manager. I'm I don't, not David just, right now. David's a character. Okay. I, um, I'm just a, trying to be, you know, legit. There are legit three here. crates. Two of them are stacked on top of each other. They are rotting and they are covered in dust. Rotting as though they are falling apart and dusty as in there is a lot of dust on them. Okay, and then above us is... Uh, so those are on the so- there. Those crates are against the south wall. 
um, which if you're looking at the stream, it says you are here. It's right beneath where it says here. Okay. Um, and in this very center of the room, above you is like a mine shaft. It's a very narrow shaft, and you can't see what's in it. I guess we have to stand up top and look. But use the lantern. He's also making it seem like the crates may not be so great to stand on because they are they are rotting and falling apart. Yeah, they're rotting yeah. and falling apart. Yeah. I mean, I'd offer to fix them, but <laughs> can I stand on my crate? Oh, there you go. Uh, yes, you can. You can stand on your crate. Where where would you be moving to to stand on your crate? Okay, tell me again. Tell me again where in the, the shaft, center of the, shaft the room, is. in the very the center shaft. of the room. Yeah, so that's a shaft where leading down. Yeah, so it would, I'd put it in the center of the room. So you move to the center of the room then. Yes. Okay, I would like to you to roll a d twenty for a saving throw. Oh, oh man! Oh. Uh, <laughs> hold on. I don't have a legit. Hold on. Would you like me to roll for you? No. I want Tim Rex to roll. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I will. He uh, got a 17. Ooh, I got a 7. 7? Seven. Seven. Yeah. That's actually a seven. critical, so you are saved. Um, by the way, if you are watching or listening to this, uh, 7 is a number for WDWNT, and I treat it as a critical, basically, which is a 20. So you expertly jump out of the way avoiding a series of sharp needles that fall into the ground right where you were standing a moment ago. <gasps> My crate! Oh. <laughs> were you holding your crate still? I mean, you'd be holding it. You, you didn't put it down. Oh, it yeah, up. no. So sure. you're holding it. It's, oh, it's my gosh, crazy. <laughs> crazy. Now, now so, uh, falling, you can go and look. Yeah. Is it there are more needles crazy. up there. Is that like Forky's like? That was all that was up there. Was a bunch of needles that triggered as soon as somebody was underneath them. I'm not sure you have our 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 best interest at heart because I feel like you kind of led me into that. (laughs) I just asked you where you moved to. (laughs) You're the one who wants to go looking up shafts. Okay, that was not appropriate. I'm 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 just saying. Okay. For, uh, for an old west mine, this is very technologically advanced. We got motion sensor technology. Indiana <laughs> Jones. It's like you know the light beams and everything. Anyways, what do you do now? You still well, got a pile that. of crates against the south wall, and there is also a door leading to the next room. I think we go with Cassie's uh, thought about trying to break open those crates. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. if they're already like falling mm-hmm. apart, and there's maybe there's the loot. So what do we need to do to do that? Well, that would be. We could just have Timrex or... fix them. It's, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a physical, or if you're using a weapon, then it would all be physical. Okay. So who's doing what? So I'll, I'll, go ahead. I can hit it with just a giant ice block. Excuse me. Uh, I have give, a, give a D twenty roll. Seven. Oh, jeez. You decimate the crates with an ice block, uh, and nothing but bats flies out of the remains of the crates. And we add the bats to our inventory. (laughs) Throw a d20 for me. Okay. Thirteen. You snatch a bat out of the air, (laughs) um... And it bites you, and you take one you take one hit point of damage. Oh. 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 I was at 21, and I will move that. Oh. You do not turn into a vampire, by the way. I'm sure oh. people are about to ask. Okay. Yeah, it was a poisonous order. Okay, so... You, uh, you have about 40 minutes before sundown. Yeah, let's just keep moving. So we triggered needles, and we broke crates that didn't have anything in them, but crate is okay, so we're heading toward the door. So, uh, this is a simple wooden door, and it is locked. Uh, lock shall it. I pick the lock? Yes, do it. Yeah. All right, I roll to pick the lock. Uh, kind of got stuck there. I'm going to go on the side of 11. 11? Okay, um, you go to pick the lock, and, uh, one of your pieces of your lock picking kit gets stuck in the lock. 
Oh no. Can we kick the door in? <laughs> well, is the door unlocked though? No, it's still locked. You it you just jammed it. Can you can- fix the jam? Oh. Or would you just break it more? Well, can you freeze the lock? That's a thing that happens, right? And then we kick that off? Yeah. We can do that. Parks manager Tyler? Uh, well, make a d20 throw if you're going to freeze the lock. Uh, and add your magic modifier. Ten. I rolled an eight. Uh, ten. Okay. Uh, you proceed to freeze the lock, which gets colder and starts cracking. Okay. This is a metal is lock, by the way. It's a it's a simple wooden door, but it is a metal lock that has now started cracking. Okay. Can I at least, if it's cracked, can I at least retrieve the part of my lock picking kit I got stuck in there? Yes. Okay, so I have an intact. So then it, what do we do? If it's already cracking, then we can shatter it, uh, or try to shatter it, which would be a physical act, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So is that something uh, that's something yep. I want to try to do? Then I have uh, 14 with a 2 modifier. Okay, then um, you, kick, uh, you kick the part of the lock that is started cracking, and it shatters open, and the door swings open. Sweet. Cool. Then we can walk through it. So now what are we looking at? you are now in the next room, uh, which is about 50 by 30 feet. Uh, inside the room, you see that somebody has scrawled the words gray, black, gray, black, black, azer on the eastern wall. Okay, can I repeat that? I think I'm going to write that down somewhere. Yes, I will repeat <laughs> Hold it. Hold on, let me, get a, let me get a clean piece of paper. I don't want to put that on my staff <laughs> sheet. I will also confirm for you that there is a rusted breastplate lying on the south side of the room, on the floor. A rusted... Gr- okay, so like sort of let's like read that back so we can write that down. So you see someone has scrolled gray, gray black... Oh, gray, black. Gray, black, black, azer. On the so eastern gray, black, gray, black, black, azure. Yes. Did I get that correct? Yes, and there is also a rusted breastplate lying on the south side of the room. Okay. Stupid me, forgot it. Besides, besides, we, besides the door you came in, there is another door leading to the next room. Do we recognize anything from the breastplate, like a design or anything? No, it is plain, polished metal that's covering in a layer of dust. Does it look old? And we clean off the dust? It is about it is about 30, 40 years old. Oh, it's old then. Do you want to investigate it? Do you want to uh, try the door? I want to look around the room. So I'm going to grab my dice. From, okay. Five. <laughs> Okay, you look around the room and you notice that the rest of the rocky walls, they they match the exterior Mm -hmm. of Big Thunder. Uh, There's nothing discernible in the area except for the other door, which is a simple wooden door with a 5 AC, and that door is unlocked. Um, Maybe we should scan again? Yeah, absolutely. I'll go ahead. Pretty oblivious. We got 11, so not too much better. Uh, <laughs> a second look around confirms what uh, <laughs> Faye found, which is that there's nothing else here in the room, and you don't feel any sense of magic or anything. Okay. There is still we just keep door. moving. So. Uh, all right. I, mean... I feel like there's something with like the words, but also like I don't want to lose. <laughs> We need the deed. Team, Team <laughs> yeah. did make a mental note of those yeah. words that are on the wall. Yes, right, I so wrote the, down. The simple wooden door is unlocked. Uh, do you want to investigate it more, or do you want to just head on through? I think we want to investigate it more. All right, who's doing that? That seems too easy. <laughs> I, I, I'll do it. I mean... Uh. 18. Hey. 18. You can tell that the simple wooden door is indeed unlocked, 
There is nothing around the outside of the doorway. There is no traps on this door. Cool. Let's go through. Walk on there. Okay, so as you make your way through the door, you are now in a long, winding hallway, which people are for watching, they can see on the stream. Um, the You see burning torches inside of iron sconces lining the walls. Despite being abandoned, someone has been here lighting these recently. At the end of the hallway is a simple wooden door that is stuck closed. Okay. Mm. Uh, can I back up a second? Did did we just leave that breastplate behind? Yes. Oh. Can we go back and get it? You can run back and get it. Okay, I'm going to run back and get it. Okay, you run back to the previous room. Uh, you pick up the breastplate, which you will, if uh, whoever's wearing it will get a plus five to their AC, which is their armor class. So if you were to go into a battle, uh, this <clears> would give you more protection. And you can obviously use this in future games and stuff as well. Uh, who has the... I mean, I have a 10. Does anybody have, have anything higher? To join the group I have an 11. I have 10. He doesn't know. No. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and take that breastplate and I'm going to give it to Tim Rack since he's got... He's got the advantage already so that he can be our tank oh, if we need him. Plus them. five, so uh, that is a 16. That's a good idea. That now makes it harder for a bad guy to be able to injure you. Yeah, a bad person, that. whoever, a monster, whatever. Uh, anyway, so you, you, are, you rejoin the group. You are still in front of a door that is stuck closed. Um. Uh, I guess we should scan the room. Investigate, I mean. All right, who's rolling for that? Uh, I'll roll for that. So I go and I get an 18. 18. Uh, you investigate and you find that this simple wooden door is just a 5 AC. So if you were to kick it, it would probably Our smash reference. into pieces. So basically, if you were to roll higher than a 5, you'd be able to break open this door easily. Um, and the door is stuck closed. It is not locked and there are no traps on the door. So this chamber has no windows and no doors? <laughs> This so chamber has a door, but it's very easy to open. Find a way out. Of course, there's always my way, which is kick the door down. I'm going to roll, and it is a 10. Okay, you kick the door, and it very easily you put your whole foot through it, and it shatters to pieces and bursts outward into the rest of the room. Because uh, I'm like so that. So the room you enter now is 50 by 50. Um, this is a huge room. You notice that there are two doors on the opposite wall. Beside one of the doors is a worn out wooden bookcase full of books. The room is huge and light colored ground. Uh, the ground is, you notice that it is a little bit lighter colored rocks or dust than the other rooms have, but the rest of the room is suspiciously empty. Investigate the bookshelf. Okay, so uh, give a d20 roll for me. 17. Okay, you as you examine the bookcase, you see that it is full of photo albums. Tons of photographs of the creation of the mine. Uh, as you flip through uh, all these photos, you notice that Nathaniel Devine, although he said he was the founder, he is not pictured in any of the photographs. As you go to take one of the albums out... You notice the bookcase shifts easily away from the wall, and with a bit of pulling, you pry it open, and you find a secret hallway. Uh, you know, maybe he was taking the pictures. Maybe that's why he wasn't in any of them. Hmm. I don't buy it. No. 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 I think he's sketch. True. I mean, either that or he's a great photographer. Um... <laughs> You know, maybe he's a photo. He moonlights as a photo pass photographer in his off hours. <laughs> um. So, reminder, what else was in the room? A yeah, reminder: there are two doors. Uh, there is the bookcase, which has now opened into a secret hallway, and the ground is lighter colored stones than the other rooms. 
But what does that mean? Well, you have to investigate or check for magic well, or something. I guess I got to investigate the room then. I roll 14. Um, as you roll, so you notice that there's a door on the western side of the wall. So you came in the south. To the west is a strong wooden door, about 15 AC, and it is currently stuck closed. It's not locked. There's no traps on it. The door to the north, which is beside the bookcase, uh, this is a strong wooden door, also 15 AC, and this door is unlocked. Um, as you examine, you notice the hallway. At the end of the hallway that you're in, there is a stone door that is locked, and you notice a portacollis. Porticolis? Portcollis? Portcollis is creaking above the door as though it's being hung on nothing but, like, a small rope. That rope. Um, so... Um, you, sorry, you... What was, you got, like, a 17, right? Uh, 14. 14. Um, as you're examining, you feel a strong magic presence from under the ground. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, we are like on an Indian burial ground, right? So I mean, it is a uh, burial ground of such. Yes. Thank you. Um, There's a lot going on in yeah. this room. Yeah. Hmm. Should we all like split up? No. Have you never seen Scooby Doo? Do, do oh, not split up. Don't split right. them. No. Never split the party. So then we either go the secret way or we try and break that door down or scan for... Something tells me that magic may be a ghost and that ghost may have information. Well, I'm just saying if we're on a burial ground, I mean, these minecarts are, you know, going all over by themselves. It seems like there's some haunting kind of going on here. So we noticed magic. What do we do with it? I mean, I'm magic. Can so, I scan for magic? But you investigated to find out that there was magic. Do you investigate the magic? Is that something that can be done? Tyler? Yes, yes, if you okay. want to continue to investigate the ground. All right, I'm investigating. Uh, 14 plus 2, 16. 16. Um, as you investigate the, the strong magic, magic presence from under the ground, uh, you kick up some rocks, you find a hard iron plate. As you uncover more of the rocks, you find the iron belongs to a chest that is locked. Like a regular, like, treasure chest? or It's like a treasure chest, yes. Okay. <clears throat> we have a lock picking kit. Do you want to use it on this chest? Uh, you can't. I dropped my d20. I just have to go looking for it. I apologize, folks. Please Would you like there. me to roll for you if you're going to lock pick? Um, just give me like seconds to find it. Maybe that's a sign. Yeah, roll for me. Okay. Uh, you got a 12. So, uh, you open up the lock, and inside of the chest is 500 WDWNT bucks. <gasps> and I'm thinking about how much rope we can buy with that. <laughs> And a brass you buy the whole set. There is also a brass spyglass. Despite being locked in this chest, it is polished, and it seems to have retro circuit board technology embedded into it. Okay, now think of this with me. We've got five hundred. We sell the spyglass for another five hundred. Then we can buy the key. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the spyglass, though, is, like, gonna come important. Well, we'll sell it after we use it. That's Okay, that's fine. Gently yeah. used. <laughs> Gently <laughs> used spyglass. <laughs> you have... It's about Pretty 15 old. minutes <laughs> until sundown. You should yeah, probably... Yeah, we're not going back to the, the key, room. so we need to just keep moving forward, but, uh... So we grab all this stuff, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you pick up the spyglass. Who's hanging on to it for now? Uh, I think Faye. Because Cassie's got all that all that cash money on her. Yeah, we don't want to do that. I, 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 I got this crate. Take the rest of that money. And okay. I got this crate, so, so I can't. So Cassie, you're hanging on to that 500 WDWT box. Yep. Faye, you now have the uh, the Spy brass spyglass. Um, which way do you want to head? You go. 
it would seem a shame not to head out into the hallway, right? Because, uh, you know, we found this really cool doorway and it's unlocked and the other one is locked, right? So, a secret hallway? Okay. So at the end yeah, of that so, hallway is a stone door, which is about 16 AC, and it is locked 10 AC. So if and Timur can find his port, die... There's a portcullis hanging above it. I die man. Oh. All the way back the This is fantastic. <laughs> Quality entertainment, folks. Let's you uh, got a pause let's... button on that video, or is this just for show? I, I could, I could hide it for now. <laughs> okay. No, no, I can't. I can't do that. Okay. Is that a brand so new couch, what, Tim Rick? What are we doing? Are we? Are you picking the lock? Are you going to try and blow open the door? Are you going to try and How stop the portcullis from smashing down on you? Is that a thing I can do? <laughs> I mean, you broke yeah. the crates. I don't know my own power, you guys. The D twenty has been recovered. Ta-da. I, I would think so, that we would just try to pick the lock first, though, before you start uh, using your power. Now. Fair enough. I mean, I'm probably need a rest too. So. Yeah. All right. It's a 10 AC. So, do you want to roll to pick that lock? That's you, Tim, right? That's you, Penguin. Okay, pick the lock. Okay, let's pick, let's pick some locks. Seven. Ah, that's a critical. <laughs> yes. You go to pick Seven. the lock, and the door itself just crumbles and disappears. <gasps> yes. Uh, the portcullis above you continues to creak as if it's going to fall at any second. So we scramble through the door. Uh, okay. You scramble through the door and the portcullis has still not fallen yet. Uh, because you decimated yeah. the door, the actual mechanics of the trap have been broken. So it's it just hanging creepy. by a thread, basically. I knew that um, was going to happen. So, while I was on the side quest to my own die, uh, did we decide not to use the secret passage? You did use no, the secret did. passage. Uh -huh. uh, so you're yeah. now in a room. It's about 50 by 30. And as you enter, a splashing noise could be heard in the center of the room. There are several wax blobs scattered throughout the room, like candles that have been used. The rocks in here are vibrant colors, and they adorn the walls, the ceiling, and the ground. Inside the rocks are glints of gems waiting to be mined out. On the ceiling, there's a, a steady stream of dripping water that falls into the center of the room, and streams out through a small hole on the northern wall, like a like a little bit of um, like a like a waterway sort of. A voice cries out from the middle of the room, "Who's there?" We can really use some um, We are the, right the, am <laughs> is it the amateur expedition company, or you, do you have the lantern still? Yeah. Okay, well, I've been holding it. You hold up the lantern, and even though he's disheveled, you can tell by the photograph that the old man in here is Glide Serenimi, the, the owner of Pecos Bills. He is still alive. His you mean clothes. The really the yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. The Uncle Ben Park is related Center. to Park oh, Center. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the man who owns Pecos Bills, okay. uh, one of the co founders of the mine. He's still alive. His clothes are tattered. He's sporting a huge beard. As he crouches on the ground, he, and his fists are balled up like he's ready to attack. No, no, we're friends. We're, we're, we're friends. We're good. We, we know uh, Skipper Dave. I don't know who that is. <laughs> did, did you find my note? Yes. Yes. We are the amateur, amateur expedition company, or <laughs> you're, you're the, called the freelance adventure company. <laughs> freelance adventure company. Oh, oh, I knew that. I knew that that note would fall into fall into some good hands. Oh, th thank you for finding my way to finding your way to me. I've I've been trapped in this mine ever since the the flood of tumbleweed. I assume that everyone thought I was dead or something, because nobody's come looking for me this whole time. I've been living off of this disgusting rainwater that's been dripping in here, and uh, I, the, uh, I, it was only a few days ago I I thought about putting a note in the bottle and popping it through that hole in there. I guess it made its way to the right hands though but this is wonderful um, thank you so much why did why now why today did you come to rescue me because it looks like there may be a new owner of big thunder mine but but, but I, I thought everyone might have died in the flood I, I mean i'm the only one alive who who is going to be named the new the new owner Mr. I don't Divine. know, but he had a cool watch. Mr. Divine. 
Mr. Divine. Mr. Divine. Uh, as you say this name, he thinks very carefully. And he says, I've I've been here, I've been in I've worked with everybody in this mine for years, and I can honestly say I don't know who that is. On um, upon that revelation, you hear a voice from behind you. Oh, thank you, it says aloud. As you turn around, Nathaniel is standing there with a TNT plunger and a fuse headed back into the mine. He's standing in the doorway as if he had been following you this whole time. So he is actually still in that hallway. He hasn't stepped through the door yet. Well, I, did knew the someone, attack him? I knew <laughs> someone would come poking around to get back into the mine to stop me from getting the deed. And you t said that you weren't, you believed me and I didn't believe you back every time you kept trying to be nice, you weirdos. So I <laughs> snuck in behind you. Now, where is that deed? Uh, we haven't Glide, found it. Glide says, no, don't tell him that. Oh. <laughs> Glide whispers, I have it, but just go along with me. I don't have it. Why don't you find folks tell him where it is, he says, winking at you. Uh, it was in that r room with the, the, with the 15 uh, uh, armor door. It was, in, yeah, it's in the room behind you. You know where you came in? Just go back out, go through that other door. I'm sure there's nothing. I, I'm sure that was guarded for a reason. <clears throat> okay. Sure there's, and there's you... nothing swinging above your head when you walk through there. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, all right, but none of you move. I'm going to go there and I'm going to be right back. And if any one of you tries to trick me, I'll be waiting in that other room with a switchblade. He goes through the other room. Uh, you hear him fidget and fumble to unlock the door to the other room. Uh, you hear that he walks down a hallway. And as he steps into the room... You hear a sound, you hear him scream in terror, and then there is silence. Glide there says, the treasure of the gods and you shall all pay with your lives. Glide turns to you and goes, how did you folks know there was a javelin trap in that room? <laughs> Lucky guess. Yeah. Wait, guess? You folks yeah. were just guessing? My, oh my goodness, what... <laughs> What incredible... We are freelancers, out. after all. <laughs> he says, Well, uh, I guess we can make our way out. I should, I should probably confirm for you. I have the deed. And he goes to take it out and hands it to you. And you notice that it's been so worn out over these years that the name at the bottom has been smudged so much that it's pretty much blank. You're essentially holding a blank deed to Big Thunder Mountain. Oh. But maybe if we get some of those books, that with that that may be enough proof. Glide, uh, Glide says we should. Well, I I definitely need to use the turtlet, and so uh, so we should probably head out uh, unless you guys aren't in any rush or anything. Uh, we have oh. a villain's party to get to. We got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we need some proof that at, at least it doesn't belong to the other guy. We can grab some books on our way out. Oh. I was <laughs> just going to say we would own it ourselves. Yeah, if it's a blank D, finders keepers, right? I mean, <laughs> right? That's what, that's what, you know, the skipper told us. We as find you, it's ours. As you begin just write to... in our position. <laughs> All right, as you begin to walk out then, you pick up a few of those photo albums. You have the blank deed with you, and uh, you go back out the way you came, because there was no longer any threat, no one's stopping you from getting out. So you exit out the hatch, and you start heading towards the the main area of Big Thunder Mountain. Uh, Glide asks you, what's uh, what's uh, going on? Why is, every, why is everybody crowded around the podium down there? Well, uh, you see that guy who is threatening us? He was I, gonna... I don't see him now. He's, <laughs> he's, he's probably gone. <laughs> I'm just saying, he asked what was going on. I'm just telling him what was happening. He, he, he was going to be named uh, the owner of the mountain. Now, that may be a little more uh, complicated now. Actually, yeah. as I'm thinking, Wait. perhaps the, they make, make a move for the daughter. That's what I was just thinking. It could go to the daughter. 
Luella? We also have to explain, like, hey, we killed your dad. No, we didn't kill your dad. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't kill your dad. We didn't do it. We he just mysteriously vanished. We, he said he was going through a door. Whatever happens beyond that is not beyond our control. That, that's true. Okay, so what? as you approach, um, you're basically holding the blank deed. Uh, so you could pretty much put down whatever name you wanted on there. Uh, the city council chairman of Frontierland will help you standing up on the platform. There's a crowd of Frontierland residents are gathered around, including Luella Devine, Ben, and Skipper David. Uh, as Luella sees your group coming up, and she goes cold, almost like she knows what happened. Um, There's a pain. <laughs> will help you says, all right, it's time to pass the ownership of the mine to the owner of the Prairie Outpost and Supply, Nathaniel Devine. Nathaniel? Does, uh, does anyone know where he is? He went to that big cupcake franchise in the sky. <laughs> Luella, upon hearing you shout that from the back of the group, she faints immediately. <laughs> ben oh, that's great. Ben it's looks at her. Thanks, man. Ben and David both just look down at her and are just like, okay. Like, they're, they're not going to help her. Uh, she's been rude to them this whole time. Um, I get that, but let's not make an arch enemy that might come back in a later episode. <laughs> what if we agree to buy five hundred dollars worth of cupcakes from her? Uh, don't like... we kind of want a sword, a magic key? Just... I mean, will help okay. you. Says aloud, "Okay, um, if Nathaniel is no longer with us, then he says questioningly because he doesn't have any proof of this. He goes, I'm not sure what we do unless." Somehow the deed happens to turn up in the next ten minutes. Uh, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> well, funny yeah? you should say that. Wh what? Bring those folks up. Um, he gestures for you to come up to the podium. He goes, wh "What? Do you happen to have it?" We do. Look. You hold up the deed, and uh, he goes, "Oh my goodness! This this is incredible. We, th this deed has been lost for." for 30, 40 some odd years or something, and I, I guess the podium is yours. Tell us who should be the rightful owner of Big Thunder Mine. The podium is all yours, basically. Oh, boy. I think, I think we gotta do the right thing and show them the photos. <sighs> but I wanna own a melon. <laughs> I know, but, like, come on. Oh. Let's, let's do the right thing here, folks. Um, maybe we could be co-owners we, yeah. yeah. we have a pretty good villain origin story in the fact that we were kicked out of sea so <laughs> yeah, we do. yeah so why I mean, shouldn't we be like the lovable misfits instead of like villains cause look I'm just okay. thinking of the future of this show okay alright yeah. so then who, do, who, who I mean who gets it if all the people in the pictures are dead other than Glide does it go to Glide I think so it goes to Glide Okay. Ben oh, is also the Ben is the surviving ben. family member of Park City. Oh, oh, okay. I get we it. got it in with Ben. So we're supposed to give it to Ben. Okay. You're not. So you then you can put whoever's name you want. I'm just saying we shouldn't give it to Glide because he's been locked up for like 40 years. Like, who knows what his mental state's really like right I now? I he's already rich from the from the okay. rent he's been getting from Skipper Dave. That's true. That's true. He's got a pretty great business going ben on. Is and ben is good to us. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And the we, someone who told gonna... us about the the cast member discount. <laughs> That's true. We're so gonna give it to Ben we'll help you, because his we'll family help you, uh, gestures for you to use the microphone. Uh, give give some kind of rousing speech. <laughs> Can I take this one because I don't have to roll for speech? <laughs> yeah, do it. Go for it. Ladies and gentlemen of Frontierland, we are proud to say that we have done our research and it is proven, it, we have known, we have discovered that the rightful owner of Big Thunder Mountain is a friend to all of us. He has been there for us, he has comforted us when we were unfairly booted out of sea, <laughs> violating rules we were not made aware of. <laughs> He has helped us through time and space, and he is the rightful owner of Big Thunder Mountain. It is my honor and my privilege to proclaim that the rightful owner of Big Thunder Mountain 
is our good friend Ben. Ben, yeah! Ben goes, oh, oh, oh my god! He starts fanning himself. Glide, Glide looks up to you, uh, and he and he gives you a, a, a nod of approval and begins clapping and then promptly takes his pants off and runs to the washroom. Um, <laughs> ben goes, thank you, everybody. I, I, you, you, won't, you won't regret it. I promise to be, uh, I promise to be good to everybody. And, uh, and yeah, pretty, thank you so much. He, he's very shy. He's never been in any kind of conga line. Uh, and he, <laughs> and he, he basically steps down. Everybody claps um, after after the ceremony, Ben goes up to you. He goes, "I want to thank you all so much. I, I promise I'll do my father, uh, my uncle, Park Center, good uh, by taking over this." And, and um, listen, I, I know you guys got kicked out of C, but if you ever happen upon one of my shops, free for everybody. Just, just, Ooh, just all of you. I, 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 it, so it, nice. it means so much that to me. Better listen, than money. listen. I'm good. I'm set. I got a, I got a <laughs> big thunder mine that I can charge people to take pictures of and <laughs> and go for tours and stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to do it as bad as the other guy, but but I promise <laughs> I'll be. I'll, I'll make sure that it, things are good. And oh so, Ben, uh, uh, before yeah. we part yeah. company, I think there's a message you should receive. We were invested. We were going down through the mine, and we had this message. I don't know if it's worth anything to us anymore. It might be worth something to you. Gray, black, gray, black, black, azure. That means literally nothing to me, but thank you <laughs> I'm anyways. just telling you what we saw. It may mean something to you in the future. All right, then. Uh, David then meets up to you after this ceremony, and he notices the glint of the brass spyglass in your ba- in your giant crate that's uh, on your back where is this rob <laughs> he's just been crazy holding it yeah he's been crady, holding just, it like just holding it <laughs> yeah, uh he me. says what is that it's crazy <laughs> crazy <laughs> no 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 the, the thing in the crate uh he reaches in and takes out the spyglass and the he spy says glass. to you this is amazing i you found this in big thunder this is part of a sophisticated machine we built way back in the day. It was supposed to help us locate a secret facility, but all the parts were stolen. We thought we would never see this again. You all did splendidly. Uh, We need to figure out who stole this, how it got into Big Thunder, and more importantly, where the other pieces are. There are three in total, but thanks to you, we now have part number one. So I say we celebrate. Tacos and fixins on me, everybody. And with that, we are done tonight's story, The Mystery of Big Thunder Mountain. Thank you, everyone, so much for coming and watching this or listening to this episode of WDWNT, the RPG. Uh, This continues to be one part of a larger story. We're handcrafting all of these D&D or D&D style campaigns and adventures from scratch so it takes a little bit of time to do it i'm sure you'll be able to see us next month um if you watch the show live uh we're going to be doing a very quick small post show at the end of it uh or if you're watching or listening to this later be sure to subscribe or follow to this feed to hear the next episode we'll keep you updated on wdwnt.com on everything the rpg and also we're the leader in disney parks so keep an ear and eye open if you enjoyed the show Please be sure to leave some feedback anywhere by typing WDWNT the RPG. You can make it hashtag WDWNT the RPG. Um, for our entire cast and crew that makes the show happen, I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much for watching. Just-